all the other times that you've been on days, you've played when you've played Andre, it's always been with Tony Demira also as a character and playing double roles, or it's been as Andre, but everyone in Salem, everyone thinks he really is Tony Demira. This is the first time you've ever been on the show playing Andre, just as Andre, and then add to that the twist that uh, you're the biological son of Stefano. And I was just wondering, are you approaching the role differently this when it's written this way as opposed to the other times? That's a good question. Um, you know, because you have different writers, and also each time I've gone back, there's a different kind of maturity, different experiences that have added to the previous ones, things that, you know, your foundation becomes a little more solid. So the gravitas you have in your language, especially since I've been writing, has allowed me to... to as one of the writers said to me something about being poetic in the way certain phrasings that Andre does um, and how does that come about? You know, um, it's like anything. You choose a way, and if it works, you keep going. I mean, I'm not, there's a lot of haters out there of the character. But I suppose that's what happens when you enjoy being bad. But, you know, <laughs> just a kind of wisdom uh, that comes with it. And, um, you know, because if this material was given to me, you know, 10, 20 years ago, it probably would have been differently. Um, it really has to do with, you know, what kind of, um, what have you filled yourself with? What's your spirit about at this stage? And how do you insert that into the character you're playing? So, yeah, I think it's to you, long-winded answer to your question. Yeah, I think. I think it's different this time because I, you know, when they said to me, Tony's dead when I had the meeting. Tony's dead. He got a spike through his heart and he's dead. And, you know, it never occurred to me, like when I look at that character and see the difference in this, it's a big difference because in the way I feel when I'm playing him. So it's it's a different rhythm. And I really think a lot of it has to do with the of, of writing because I think when you start write, using words that become yours when you're expressing something, that kind of weight cannot help but make you understand language better so that when you play it, there's a different weight to it, you know. Yeah. You know, it's funny because, you know, thinking about, you know, people that are hating Andre, but when you really think about it, the times you've been on the show, you've played Andre longer than you've ever played Tony because so many years Andre was really, you know, everyone thought he was Tony, but he was really Andre. So Andre's actually been the character with more longevity. It's just nobody realized it at the time. <laughs> I thought that was... I found the years of James Riley's episodes of Andre was kind of bordering on cartoonish. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was it was big in the... Production was big, you know, they had money to spend. Now it's becoming a little more economical, so it's about the writing and the actors. And um, But I just find it interesting. I don't usually read other people's opinions, but it's, it's so interesting to, to see how the character affects people. Um, you know, I suppose if they weren't mentioning you, that, that you know, they wouldn't say much, but boy, there's just some out there. I was saying to myself, as I was reading, I thought, my God, these people are, you know, I, I may be playing a role. I know who I am as a person. I don't knock things down. Or, but, you know, I like to build up. But just how many people want to come into the attack? And I'm thinking, my God, I'm acting the part. They're playing, they're the real deal. <laughs> and I, yeah. how do they they live with themselves and I'm going I'm only, I'm only this is what I get paid for to do so when they do that I just go wow and there's so many unhappy people out there you know well, they just you're doing your job get, well you're 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 playing you know a villain if you're if they're playing a villainous character and they're living to hate you which is why they say it but sometimes I think some of the soap fans don't realize they're actors 
you know, they're, you're not the talking to the character, you're talking to the actor, and they, they confuse it sometimes, I think. So, you know, you've got right now, Andre's storyline is uh, really uh, in the forefront with uh, having discovered Steph- Stefano's body and uh, in, in the warehouse, and then the warehouse uh, being, uh, you know, uh, destroyed and him caught in it, and now his face is messed up, and he's trying to get revenge and hope, and I, as I understand it, there's going to be major revenge coming this week. Uh, how is the, I mean, for one thing, how has it been with the makeup? Have you had to spend a lot of time in makeup with getting Andre's face on the way it is now? Well, you know, I, I'm very friendly with Lauren Coslo, and her husband, mm-hmm. Nikki, does the makeup. Oh, and okay. He's, uh, he's, a, uh, he's great. He's great, too. You know, it's a, I mean, most it's a lot of perseverance because things are done in layers, and you know, you get one part of your face done, and then you've got to go and do another. So after five months, I started to going, oh, I could use that forty-five minutes that it takes now. Before it was taking longer, but the scars getting less and less. I I could be studying my work, you know, try to study all that, or doing something else and just sitting while somebody creates this and. But because he's wonderful and we have laughs and all that, I don't mind it. But yeah, I think the writers like the bar, the, the the scar. You know, I wanted I wanted it to be cut differently the way that it was done ended up being. You know, it was like slices. I wanted a scar from my cheekbone down near, down uh, the, down the middle of the cheek where the mouth is, uh, but not touching the mouth because then, then you could see it. Um, but that's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to. It's the, I had a friend who had a car accident and had the worst scar, but it was the face looked great and it was lethal. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but well, you, know, you look very Phantom of the opera with uh, especially the scenes where you're wearing the hat. You've got the hat and you've got the thing covering your face <laughs> and you're and uh, staring into hopes, you know, staring at hope. Uh, with with revenge, you know. I, I love the way that looks, the look of all that. Did you like the hat? I do like the hat. I think the hat, it's just, it adds a whole different uh, uh, feeling to Andre, you know, with, with everything that's happened. And, you know, as people have been saying, other stuff people have been saying is it's, you're getting a sense of him becoming the next phoenix, rising from the ashes, and he's taking up where Stefano left off. And you're seeing some of that. As well, I think. Yes, um, I always go to the Godfather because of the way they sat. If you notice those men, they sat very still. They didn't have to make too many mannerisms, but when they did, it was economical. So I always like their their um, centeredness. So, mm-hmm. and that depends on the chair you sit in, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, I know you can't really say what's going to happen, you know, with Andre. But where, you know, if what would you like to see happen with Andre? I, I'd like to do things like because of, of what I think his intelligence is, that I would like to be able to maybe get into a spy situation of where I actually help the other side without them knowing or ever finding out. It's just my own satisfaction. You know, it's it's like, you know, a dark man, you know, where he goes around and he does do some good things. It's not always going to be shadowed. Um, although I do like, you know, I think about the clown and how much I enjoyed that. Um, not while I was doing it, because I, I got scared in the beginning of that. Because um, I thought, oh, how do you do a clown? And even though I've seen clowns in movies, uh, I... You know, once I put it on, it's like I nobody really knew who it was it's when I walked into the to the on the stage. All the they all looked at me, saying, "Who the hell is this?" And so it was the first time. I mean, there's something about being able to. It's almost like you're invisible to a point, and so you get a certain freedom that comes out of it. And you know, I start doing turns and spins and dances. I mean. Things and I don't know, and I thought it's because no one's gonna. I'm not gonna get embarrassed because I'm hiding behind a clown. Mm-hmm. So that was a new one. And then I thought, oh, I wouldn't mind. I wish they'd bring the clown back. 
then who would I disturb? <laughs> well, it was fun. You know, Andre was always, uh, I, you know, I've been watching, like, some of the old 80s episodes before you returned to Days this last time, and seeing Andre on stage, you know, uh, the sky's this uh, um, Othello and King Lear and, you know, playing Shakespearean roles and unhappy where he was. But, uh, you know, it was fun to see him in all the different disguises. You know, it'd be, it might be fun to see if they ever bring Andre around, bring the actor out in him again, you know, where he's where he's putting on the different disguises to get whatever he wants. Well, maybe when it's going to a Brady uh, party of celebration with kids and everything, and Andre, they don't realize, but Andre is hired as the clown. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> well, you know, you've also been teamed up uh, in a lot of scenes with Billy Flynn and Kate Manzi, some of the younger actors. For you, when you first came onto Soaps, as, either as General Hospital or those early years of days, was there someone around uh, that sort of showed you the ropes, so, so was sort of a mentor to you with how to work on a soap? I, I have to say, it really was Gloria Monti at General Hospital uh-huh. because she allowed me to fail. She took me aside when I never in my life had learned that many lines, and she said to me, darling, she said, you know exactly what you're doing. It's okay. It's okay, she would say to me. And she was tough as nails than other people, but she was very kind. And she told me to get out of daytime, go to the better place, bigger place. She was very honest. But then she'd come to another actor and she'd say, you see, you see this pencil? If I break this pencil at your name, that's it for you. And the actor would start mm-hmm. behaving. So that's how the kind of power she had. But um, that's where I think the source of it is. 